before the advent of birth control pills, condoms, and intrauterine devices, have you ever wondered how people who lived thousands of years ago prevented pregnancy? Did they just strictly apply abstinence or did women just give birth prolifically? So you're not gonna be surprised to know that they did indeed do things to try to prevent pregnancy, but the measures they took for birth control were both incredibly strange and in some cases incredibly dangerous. And I'm gonna talk about some of the weirdest and grossest ancient methods for preventing pregnancy. But before I get into this video, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. Thanks for watching In The Pink. And if you're new here, In The Pink means in good health and spirit. So make sure you click subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Now, I'm not gonna make you wait. I'm just gonna jump in right now to what I consider the grossest one, crocodile poop. So in 1850 BC, people from ancient Egypt had writings suggesting crocodile dung in fermented plant gunk as a way to avoid pregnancy. So they would mix crocodile dung with honey, and it's thought that the acidity of the dung may have acted like a spermicide, while the antibacterial property of honey could have killed the bacteria that was actually in the dung. The idea is if these substances are inserted in the vagina before intercourse, it becomes both a physical barrier and also as a spermicidal or sperm killing contraceptive. Also in the 11th century AD, Arabian books such as Canon of the Medicine contained instructions of using elephant dung for the same purpose. Obviously this goes without saying, but this is definitely not a safe practice for today. Animal dung, when placed in the vagina, poses high risk of infection for both the female and the male partners too. It can lead to complicated urinary tract infections, which needs to be treated with potent antibiotics, which they didn't really have back then. And in addition, there was no real official record saying if it was an effective contraception. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Next one squeezed lemons. The famous Giovanni Casanova, a name that is widely used now synonymously with womanizer, invented his own version of a cervical cap during the 1700s. He wrote in his autobiography how he would put partly squeezed halves of lemons in his partner's services. The citric acid in the lemon was known to be a spermicidal back then. However, other similar devices were also used in different parts of the world before. In Asia, sex workers used oil paper discs. Algae and seaweed were some alternatives, women from Eastern Island. Other cervical like cap and diaphragm alternatives were rock salts, balls of opium, beeswax, seeds, and sponges. In the 1800s, a German gynecologist created what would closely resemble the modern day cervical cap. Now, although these methods are not as unhygienic as animal feces, using the squeezed lemon during intercourse today might be considered barbaric, especially considering the modern day version of these cervical caps have a 70 to 80% efficacy for preventing unwanted pregnancies. These old versions are not gonna fit well in the cervix, it might get dislodged, the spermicide effect could be negligible at best, and above all, these things must have been terribly uncomfortable for these women. Next, mercury. Mercury is an element that can be found in modern day products like batteries and thermostats and other electronics. Because it's a potent neurotoxin, which is a substance that can damage neurons, its use in modern day is well regulated. In fact, it's in the World Health Organization's top 10 list of chemicals of major public health concern. This is why it's surprising that hundreds of years ago, Chinese women were told to drink warm concoctions of mercury as a form of contraception. Its toxicity goes well beyond avoidance of pregnancy though. It may cause permanent sterility. If a pregnant woman ingests mercury, their unborn child's brain development would be impaired. The mother may suffer from organ failure and at a high dose, even death. In a similar fashion, during 800 to 600 AD, women in ancient Greece drank lead concoctions from blacksmiths. While this can be considered an effective contraception, it risks the health of the women themselves. Can you just imagine, like, instead of going to the pharmacy for birth control, going to your local machinist and asking them for a nice, refreshing drink of lead lemonade? 
I told them I do not drink motor oil. In areas where elephant feces and mercury isn't readily available, women had a narrower choice of contraception. During the fur trade area in the 1700s, women from New Brunswick, Canada would drink dried beaver testicles laced with moonshine. There's no real research explaining the rationale for this. At most, it was probably because beaver testicles were believed to have medicinal properties. It was used as an ingredient in homemade remedies for common ailments. It said that the beaver testicles contained a very pungent smelling substance called castorium. However, the smell itself might be enough to drive you or your partner to abstinence. Speaking of testicles, European women from the Middle Ages were advised by magicians to tie weasel testicles around their thigh as a form of contraception. Records didn't mention if it's supposed to be during, before, or after intercourse, but either way, we cannot see the science behind this. If there's no weasel testicle available, they would tie an amputated foot around their neck instead. This might have quickly lost its appeal because amulets were also recommended as a form of contraception. These amulets would contain cat bones or liver, the anus of a rabbit, or a cloth soaked with menstrual blood. Interestingly enough, when using a cat, you can't just use any cat. It actually specifically says it has to be a pure black cat. Of course, none of these methods worked. There's even some vague mention that some would advise women to walk around a place where a pregnant wolf urinated. What? Next is fish bladders. The swim bladders of a fish are pouches inside of their body cavities. These are air-filled organs used by the fish for buoyancy and for respiration. Prior to the 19th century during the Renaissance, this was popular among the soldiers of King Charles I. The fish bladders were fine and durable and with little effect on sensation. They would often use the bladder of sturgeons or catfish. So before they use it, it would be cleaned thoroughly and then tied at the end with a ribbon. Unlike modern condoms, these fish bladders can be reused. Men simply washed and then dried them and then rubbed oil on it to prevent drying. Some would even apply some scent for added appeal. One, two, three, four, much like the modern day condoms made out of latex, the purpose of the male condom is the same. In 17th century England, use of these bladder condoms resulted in a decrease in fertility rates. The ancient Romans, though, used this primarily as a way of preventing sexually transmitted infections. Either way, the evolution of condoms from animal intestines and fish pouches to latex has made modern day contraception convenient. While this isn't as weird or as toxic as the other methods mentioned, the idea of using something today that came out of a fish may not be quite as appealing. Now, it's easy to think, you know, these people lived hundreds or thousands of years ago before modern medicine. Maybe you can't blame them for trying these things. They didn't really know better. However, as recently as the early 1900s, women used Lysol as a form of contraception. During that time, Lysol was marketing heavily to women to douche with Lysol. Advertisements targeted women's feminine hygiene as a reason for losing their husband's love and endorsing douching Lysol as a safe and gentle way to practice good feminine hygiene. <sighs> However, feminine hygiene and feminine odor was just a euphemism for contraception since it was still illegal to use birth control at that time. This effective form of advertisement had women douching after intercourse to disinfect their vagina and to rinse out and kill sperm. Until 1953, Lysol contained the ingredient m -cresol, and This is a harsh chemical that they had documented to be very harmful. People were observing to have skin irritations, blistering, burning at best, and also abdominal pain, heart damage, coma, and death. In fact, in 1911, there had been recorded 193 poisonings and five people had died because they douched with Lysol. Yet Lysol continued to market to women for decades. Using Lysol was still used for contraception until the 1960s when the first birth control pill came out on the market. By the way, douching does not eliminate vaginal odors because normal vaginal odors are normal and don't need eliminating. If you have 
abnormal vaginal odor, it's possibly due to an infection, which douching won't treat either. You need the proper medication, so any way you look at it, there's no need to douche. It actually increases your chance of getting a vaginal or pelvic infection because it disrupts the normal flora and pH of your vagina. After watching this video, I hope you definitely feel lucky to be living in a time where modern medicine has already invented the safest and most effective form of birth control. If you found this video interesting, Please let me know in the comment section below what other topics you would like me to cover. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Diane in the Pink if you haven't already. Up next, I'm gonna put my video about interesting things that a baby does inside the womb. I'm gonna to link to that video right here. Click on that and I'll see you over there.